with everything that's here right now, I think you have an idea on what we're talking about today. So let's get started. Whatever it is that you print will depend on the quality of the photo that you take. So regardless if it's on an iPhone or it's in a Samsung or using an actual camera, if that one gives you bad quality, you can't expect any of these to give you a better output. I just wanted to get that out there first before anything else. The very first thing you have to remember is that when taking photos, lighting really matters. No matter how nice your phone is, your camera is, if your lighting is not good and your surrounding is not well lit, it will give you grainy photos and that's not something you like when you're trying to print something colored or anything for that matter. So. What you have here on my phone is taken with an iPhone 6. I transferred it to the phone that I'm currently using now. And as you can see, this is what I took a photo of and the lighting is amazing. I have with me, like, well, the area that I work in right now has a window beside me so the light just comes in naturally. Now. I like to edit my photos using VSCO. I am not sure if you guys know that, but here. So I have like already a preset of photos, so I just include that. The one that we just recently took, I have that. And as you can see, I have other photos as well. So what I just do to maintain everything to look the same and uniform is I just copy my previous edits and I paste it on the one that I just imported recently and paste. Now I save it back to my camera roll and it's going to look from that it's going to look like this which is how all my photos look like anyway so now when you see them on Instagram when you see them Printed, it always has that same feel or vibe through my photos. So if you see that, this is how it's gonna look like. So if you see, everything has the same feel, the same tone, the same warmth or coolness among the photos. And, <coughs> excuse me, that's something I like to maintain throughout my photos. The first thing you have to remember that no matter how great your phone is, your camera is, if you do not have good lighting, you will not have a good photo. I am talking in terms of your regular Instagram photos, not those DSLR photos where you can adjust like the shutter speed, N none of that. Just really just ba taking a basic photo and printing it out. Now, what I have here, I took this using an iPhone 6. The one that you see here i am currently using an iphone 10 and just for you to see that i know the photo quality of the cameras are much different but in terms of printing and on instagram you can still make it look clean crisp and really amazing just because of good lighting now i like to edit my photos i use vseo it's an app for it and I have like made a certain preset already for my photos now what I do so I just add in the photo that I just took here and import it to my feed now as you can see I have a lot of photos already that's there so what I just do is I copy the edits that I've previously done and paste it onto the new photo. With that, I save the new photo onto my camera roll and that's how I have my photos on Instagram looking like consistent and all that. So when you run through my feed, it has the same color vibe or theme through it. Uh, basically because I just use one it's not 
exactly a filter but it's a setting that i use so i control the brightness the contrast the white balance especially when my setting is kind of yellow meaning it's a little later in the afternoon or it's a bit orangey i have to adjust the white setting just to compensate and add a little blue to the photo to make it a little cooler so if you can see again that, that's how it's mostly looking like and that's how it looks cohesive in a sense even if i do post different photos this is the paper rang thermal printer that i've been using every time you see me printing in black and white this is what i've been using this one connects to your phone via bluetooth so all you need to do is make sure it's connected you have the app so it still shows offline so it's gonna appear connected like there and what I usually do is I use the image slice and then I get the photo that we just printed out I like making it look like a Polaroid shot but I'm not really a fan of the whole Polaroid printing because it comes out too thick for my journal so what I do is I just adjust the brightness a bit actually I make it a little more darker so there it shows that then print this and then it comes out so it's a small photo what I do I like to pull it a little more and I just stare it so that's how it looks like it's really thin it's just really like a receipt piece of paper so you have that option of either reprinting or not but then we're done with the paper rang and so I can just go finish so it works with like it has its own like to-do list if you want so there it comes out like that keep scrolling it also has like post-it notes it, if no, no no it has those print out for post-it notes that you can use and there so this is one of my favorites i know it's a pig but yeah so like you can type in reminders like that oh yeah stuff like that and then but basically, that's it for your thermal printer with the paper ram. Another printer that connects via Bluetooth is the HP Sprocket. This has been one of my go-to printers. Not exactly for the quality, but because it print the prints come out cheaper as opposed to the ones of Kodak. The colors don't come out as rich as the Kodak would, but it serves its purpose, at least for me. So when you see my photos like this, these are from the HP Sprocket, like that. This is also from the HP Sprocket. Oh yeah, there. See, this is what I mostly use on my journals because it's a lot cheaper. But I know you've been asking how I make it look like a Polaroid, so I'll share that with you as well. Now, I have the Procreate app on my phone. So I have this setting that comes with the... Um, I have the Instagram story setting. It'll appear that way. And then I have this, is what I use already as a preset. Now, I have those washi sorry i have those watercolor washes that i use so this is your photo this is how your polaroid looks like and now i just make the layers visible so it adds those watercolor watches that i like now i can adjust them accordingly so to move oh there so when i'm done that's how it's going to look like and um, yeah, so what I just do, I save it that way. I 
just save it jpeg and when you see it on instagram stories that's how it looks so when it comes to printing on the sprocket to make it look like the polaroid prints that i do i use the procreate app again i just put new and i have a setting that says hp polaroid so it's just a two by three setting for this printer specifically now all i do is just minimize a bit add a layer include like insert that photo that i like so there it goes and i always tap that magnetic to make it sure that whenever i do resize it it's equal now i just move it a bit resize accordingly So now it looks like those Polaroid prints and I just save it. Oops. I just save it. It's JPEG. Save. Now I just turn this on again. There. It'll detect soon so it says hp sprocket wants to connect so just allow it and boom now this is the photo that i really wanted anyway so no need to edit i just print oh crap anyway i'm gonna fast forward through this part of the video but this is also how it looks like when you have to load your printer Okay, now that's done it's going to start printing the actual photo this little blue thing i don't know it helps really oh, and now. apparently it is working for some reason anyway so this is how it's gonna look like so now it looks like a polaroid photo of those things just turn this off and so again it does the work. I mean, you'll see what I mean when I start using the Kodak Mini, the photos that it prints out. But then again, there. So you have these. And this one is important. So when it starts like messing up your photo, like there are lines that appear on the photo, I have to load this all over again just to make the printer work better. I don't know if there's some glitch in it, but that's what helps me so I don't keep wasting ink sheets. Last but not the least, this is my favorite printer to date. And I know it looks so dirty because it got, you know, it was in a box when I was moving, but this one connects to your phone through Wi Fi. So I just look for it. gonna appear in a bit so last but not the least this is the Kodak mini this connects to your phone through Wi-Fi and now I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say the photo quality isn't as good as this now you can also edit this through your app 
is to adjust the photo setting or like the placement of the photo. So now I just press print. Of course, I had to run out of ink all over again and I'm quickly losing light by the way. So this video has been taking so much time already. So let me do this faster. This is your Kodak cartridge and um, yeah. Again, these printers don't ha don't need ink anymore. So you just Okay, so we're quickly losing light and I'm really sorry, but this is just how you refill this printer. Now, each cartridge comes with uh, 10 pages, 10 photos. Slip it in and turn it on again. Connect it back to your printer. And finally, we can print. Just edit. And print. So this printer um, prints the photo per color. So it starts off with yellow. And then it comes out in magenta. And then... Come on, come out. Sorry, it's been acting up really weird and I don't know what's going on. But normally, it doesn't give me a problem. And um, it's still, despite all this, it's still going to be my favorite printer among all of these. And you'll understand what I'm saying when I say that the print quality is so much different and so much better than uh, the HP Sprocket that I've been using. Now, it the last part it also comes out with a coating so it stays i think for a good five or ten years I, i'm not just that sure anymore but then you'll see it looks so much different so you'll see the photo itself it looks really really nice as compared to the hp sprocket one so yeah, I think that's the main consideration for me for a printer, but yeah. So here's a quick recap. This is using the Kodak Mini. Is I'm trying to put it as close to the camera as possible. I won't be comparing the quality of the thermal printer anymore because you guys know it's just a black and white print. But in terms of photo quality, you can see really the difference between the Sprocket and the Kodak Mini. And now you understand why I really prefer, sorry, why I prefer the Mini over the Sprocket. So now that you have these, I hope this instruction video helps you guys in understanding my choice of photo printers. Again, you'll see the difference you'll see you finally understand what i'm talking about when i say that the hp sprocket doesn't really print as well or as clean as the kodak mini but the thing is here in manila the cartridges for the kodak mini is slightly more expensive than the ones of the sprocket so for any random photos that i want to put in my journal i just use the sprocket and for the nicer photos, I prefer using the Kodak Mini. Now, again, this is the same photo from the same camera with the same editing, with the same lighting. And you can see the big difference already. So I hope this makes sense now. And I hope this helps you guys in choosing which printer to use more often, which one will work for you or if this is fine with you that's okay too but for me i'd still pick the kodak Mini. but yeah so i hope this helps you guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye